Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to continue the read aloud of our novel, Cam Jansen, The Chocolate Fudge Mystery. So yesterday we finished with Cam and Eric um, by a garbage bin and Cam wanted to go in and look at what the garbage was because a mysterious woman had walked over and put the garbage in this garbage can and it was at her house. So they're wondering what's going on. So we stopped over at the end of chapter two and it had said, uh, it's not your garbage, Eric said. Oh, that's silly. Cam began to lift the lid again. Stop, Eric told her. There may be a bomb in there. Chapter three. Cam gently put the lid down. Eric said, you know, we were told in safety class not to go near strange packages. Cam stepped away from the garbage can. She closed her eyes and said, click. What are you trying to remember? Eric asked. Cam clicked again. Then she said, I was looking at the pictures I had in my head of that woman carrying the bag. She wasn't holding it like she was afraid it would explode. And she just dropped it in the garbage can. She wouldn't have done that if there was a bomb inside. Cam lifted the lid and looked inside. What do you see? What's in there? Eric asked. Lots of apple peels. Cam shook the bag. There's an empty skim milk carton under the peels and an empty box of oat bran, Cam said. Eric leaned closer. Yuck, he said. It stinks. Then he looked in and said, maybe the paper money bands are at the bottom. Cam rolled up her sleeves and dug into the bag. What's in there? Eric asked. More garbage. Cam pulled out a few soda cans, some paper plates, an orange juice carton, and a cereal box. Super sweet wheats, Eric said, and the box top is still attached. He tore the box off the cereal. I can send this in and get a super sweet wheats watch, he said. He put the box top in his pocket. Cam shook the bag again, and she reached in and took out a large envelope. It was empty. Nothing but garbage, she said. Then she put it all back in the bag. Cam put the lid on the can. She was about to roll down her sleeves when she smelled her hands. Yuck, now my hands stink. If I roll down my sleeves, my shirt will stink too. Cam stretched her hands out. She told Eric she was keeping her smelly hands away from the rest of her. Then Cam said, I just don't understand it. The woman looks so guilty and so mysterious. Oh, everything's a mystery to you, Eric said as they walked past the Miller house. Eric kicked two rolled up newspapers out of the way as he and Cam walked up to the front path of the yellow and up to the yellow house next door. Eric rang the front doorbell. He waited. Then he rang it again. He knocked on the door, but there was no answer. Hmm, there's probably no one at home, he said. Cam nodded. Look at these newspapers. It looks like no one's been here for a while. They each picked up one and looked at it. Eric read the headline on the newspaper. Ding dong, four alarm fire blazes on. Mine says that too, Cam said. These newspapers are all from last week. She dropped the paper and walked towards the back of the house. Eric ran after her and asked, what are you doing now? I still think that woman with the dark glasses was up to something and I want to find out what it was. We first saw her walking along the side of the house. Maybe there's a shortcut back here or maybe some secret hideaway. Oh, stop talking about that woman, Eric said, but he still followed Cam. All the windows of the yellow house were closed and the shades were down. Cam lifted the lids of the two garbage cans that were along the side of the house. Both were empty. Cam walked ahead, then she stopped and held out her hand and Eric stopped too. She put her finger in front of her mouth so that he would be quiet. They listened. They heard the sounds of coins and keys jingling. 
Someone was walking behind them and was getting closer. Jingle, jingle. What should we do? Eric asked. Cam looked across the backyard. It was surrounded by a metal fence. Jingle, Cam whispered. Let's run around the back of the house to the other side and then out. Jingle. Cam and Eric started to run. Whoever was following them started to run too. Stop! Stop running right now! Someone called out. Chapter 4. No picture. Visualize the story in your mind. Cam and Eric stopped running. Cam held Eric's hand and they slowly turned around. What are you doing here? I told you that I had to be able to see you from my car at all times. It was Cam's father. You're standing on someone's private property, he said. You're not supposed to be here. Did you see that woman with the dark glasses, Cam asked. She looked mysterious to me. She was walking back here. I just wanted to find out what she was up to. She may have been involved in a crime. Mr. Jansen was holding a book. He showed it to Cam. Do you see this? If you want to solve crimes, do what I do. Read a mystery. It's safer. Now get out of here. Come on. Tinkle, tinkle. Someone or something was moving nearby. Watch out, Eric called. He jumped to get out of the way of a black and white cat. A small bell was tied around its neck. The cat leaped onto the back porch and poked its head into a cardboard box. Let's go, Cam's father said. The cat pulled on the box and tipped it over. Containers of milk and juice and a box of super sweet wheats and a wrapped loaf of bread fell out. The cat bit into the plastic wrapping around the bread. It ran with the loaf to the far end of the yard right in front of the metal fence. Mr. Jansen started to walk towards the front of the house. He called to Cam and Eric. I expect both of you to be following me. Cam caught up with her father and asked him, if there's no one at home, why is there food on the back porch? Maybe there's a homebound person living in the house, someone too sick to go shopping, he answered. And he has his groceries delivered. And too sick to come to the door to buy chocolate or rice cakes, Eric added. Cam, Eric, and Cam's father had walked to the front sidewalk. Mr. Jansen stopped. Something stinks, he said. He checked the bottoms of his shoes. It's my hands, Cam said. I was looking through some garbage. What? Just then a letter carrier turned the corner. Make sure you wash your hands, Mr. Jansen told Cam. Mr. Jansen looked at the letter carrier, walking towards them. Then he said, there's a mailbox next to the front door, and it's empty. Either someone is in this house and is taking in the mail, or the people who live here are on vacation and have stopped their mail delivery. We'll see in a minute. The letter carrier went up to the miller's front walk. He put some letters and a magazine in their box, then he walked towards the yellow house. Mr. Jansen smiled. Good afternoon, the letter carrier said as he walked past. He didn't deliver anything to the yellow house. Well, no one is home, Eric said. He picked up the bag of candy and rice cakes. Now let's raise some money for Ride and Read. Cam stared at the yellow house. You say no one is home, but there's a box of food on the back porch. Cam looked at the front windows and at the closed curtains hanging inside. She looked at the outdoor furniture. That was neatly stacked on the front porch and the many newspapers on the front lawn. Cam clicked. She clicked again. She stared at the house for another minute. Then she said slowly, someone went to a lot of trouble to make us think that no one is living in this house. Hmm. But that woman probably brought that box of food here and the garbage she was carrying was from this house. There is something hiding in there and I'm going to find out who it is. Chapter 5. Cam quickly went next door. She found a spot in the miller's yard where she could see between the hedge and the fence. 
She sat on the grass and watched the back of the yellow house. Why is she so sure that someone is hiding in there? Mr. Jansen asked Eric. Eric shrugged his shoulders and he shook his head. He didn't know. And where did she go? Eric shook his head again. Eric and Mr. Jansen walked ahead towards the Miller's house. Then Mr. Jansen saw Cam sitting in the Miller's backyard. She can't do that. She should be sitting on someone else's lawn, Mr. Jansen said. We know the people who live here. Eric said they bought candy and rice cakes from us. We can ask them if Cam can stay there. Mr. Jansen stood behind Eric as he rang the doorbell of the Miller's house. Mrs. Miller came out wearing the same long frilly apron. Hello again, she said. The chocolate fudge bar is delicious. The rice cakes are good too, Eric had said to them. Mrs. Jansen, Mr. Jansen stepped forward. My daughter's name is Jennifer Jansen, the pretty girl with the red hair and the freckles who came to your house earlier. She's sitting in your yard right now watching the yellow house next door. If you don't want her to be there, please let me know. I'll tell her to leave. She thinks someone's hiding in there, Eric added. She does? Oh my goodness, I must tell Jacob. Mrs. Miller came back a moment later with her husband. The Pells live next door, Mr. Miller said, but they're on vacation. They won't be back for several weeks. Someone left a box of food on the back porch, Eric said. Cam is watching to see if anyone will come and get it. Who is Cam? Mrs. Miller asked. That's Jennifer's nickname. It's Jennifer's nickname is Cam, Mrs. Jansen explained. It's short for the camera. We call her that because she has a photographic memory. Oh, well, your camera daughter might be right, Mrs. Miller said. The Pell's nephew may be in the house. I've never met him, but I know he's a writer. And Mrs. Pell has told me that he's trouble finding a quiet place to work. Let's go outside and see if Jennifer has seen anyone, Mr. Miller said. Mr. Jansen and Eric waited while Mrs. Miller took off her apron and hung it in the closet. She put on a straw hat with a wide brim. They all walked to the backyard. Eric sat in the grass next to Cam. The Millers and Mr. Jansen stood next to them. Mr. Jansen asked Cam, what makes you so sure someone is hiding in there? It's the newspapers on the front lawn. Have to visualize. So it's the newspapers on the front lawn, Cam said. The newspapers, her dad said. That's a sure sign that no one's in the house. I smell something, Mrs. Miller said. Shh, Eric said, I hear something. Mrs. Mr. Jansen and the Millers bent down, so they were hidden by the hedges. They were quiet. They didn't see anyone, but they heard someone or something moving. Dingo, meow. The black and white cat jumped onto the back porch again. With its paws and mouth, it tried to open the cardboard box carton of milk. Mr. Jansen and the Millers stood up. Eric and I looked at a newspaper, Cam said, and both papers had the same headline. Whoever's hiding in that house probably bought a bunch of papers the day he went into hiding, rolled them up, and then threw them on the lawn so people would think the house was empty. Eric said the woman with the dark glasses may have thrown the papers there. The cat pulled the milk carton to the edge of the steps and stepped away. The carton fell down the steps and tore open. The cat began to lick up the spilled milk. Suddenly the cat stopped. It looked up. Its legs were bent. The cat was ready to run. It heard something, Mr. Jansen whispered. He and the Millers bent down. There was a creaking sound. Then the back door of the yellow house opened. There goes my phone. We will continue with chapter six next time. Have a great day.